Thanks for clicking. All eyes were on the Bank of Canada this morning as it was set to make its second last interest rate announcement for 2023, with the majority of onlookers predicting that the bank would be holding on rates. We got our answer at 10 a.m. this morning when the bank announced they would be leaving the policy rate unchanged at 5%. It's the least we could do. In addition to the rate announcement, the bank also released its monetary policy report, where it noted that it doesn't expect inflation to return to target until 2025. Following the release, Bank of Canada Governor Tiff Macklin and Deputy Governor Carolyn Rogers held a press conference and Q&A session, where they addressed the upward revision to the inflation forecast, the growing problems in the Middle East, the housing market, and government spending. Oh, f you. Yeah. So what I want to do today is go over the policy announcement, take a look at the press conference and Q&A session held by the governor and the deputy governor, and then discuss what to look for next. Speaking of next, the end of the month is fast approaching and we're expecting to get October's real estate data out from the local boards late next week. And we'll obviously have updates out on that data on this channel. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates. But for now, let's get into this policy announcement. On to the announcement, as mentioned, the bank announced this morning that it would be leaving its policy rate unchanged at 5%. Didn't I predict that this would happen? The bank noted in its announcement that there's growing evidence that previous rate hikes are working to slow down the economy and slow down the pace of price growth. With that said, the bank was quick to point out that core measures of inflation, the measures of inflation the bank looks to when deciding whether or not to raise or lower rates, are showing very little downward momentum. The bank noted that it was still worried about corporate pricing behavior and that inflation expectations are only coming down slowly and that it remained concerned about the 4-5% to increases in wages. Tough As such, the bank stressed that it was prepared to raise rates more if need be. And, in addition to the release of the policy rate, the bank also released its monetary policy report, wherein it outlined its expectation that inflation won't get back down to target until 2025, and it expects inflation to sit around 3.5% for the better part of next year. And Bank of Canada Governor Tiff Macklin addressed this at the press conference held at 11. We now expect inflation to be about 3.5% through to about the middle of next year. As excess, as excess supply in the economy increases, inflation should ease further in 2024 and reach 2% in 2025. So, at least according to the bank's projections, we're not heading back to that 2% target until at least 2025. We don't have much time. Yet, one of the biggest upside risks to this inflation forecast, one of the biggest risks that inflation could in fact go higher, and the biggest elephant in the room, are the current problems in the Middle East, which was addressed directly by the Bank of Canada Governor. In addition, rising global tensions are increasing risks. In a more hostile world, energy prices could move up sharply, supply chains could become disrupted again, and all of that could push up inflation again around the world. And I think this is an extremely important point of which Canadians need to take heed right now. As I've been hearing more and more in the real estate industry are pushing their clients back into variable rates with the understanding that rates are close or at their peak level. Have I ever steered you wrong, Jim? And these recommendations for variable rates come amid a big, huge black swan event of which absolutely no one on earth can predict how it will play out. It could work out well and prices and hence rates won't go up any further. On the other hand, as articulated by the Bank of Canada Governor, if it doesn't turn out well in energy prices spike and so too do other prices, interest rates could very well go higher. What we'd be particularly focused on is the impacts on core inflation. When, if we saw evidence that higher energy prices were passing through to broader prices because of higher transportation costs, for example, you know, that would be a signal that you know, that increase in oil prices is starting to feed through to the rest of the economy, and that would really be something uh, of concern to us. So, to borrowers, yes, variable rates could very well turn out fine, but understand that this is a very, very uncertain time, and no one can predict where energy prices are going to go. And, to the usual suspects pushing variable rates, understand that the evidence is right there. We know full well what happens when it goes bad in the Middle East, what happens to energy prices and inflation, and then interest rates. If energy prices spike and inflation follows, no one is going to believe that this wasn't entirely predictable. They might, they just might. But I digress. The governor was then asked, besides higher oil prices, 
was there anything numerically that the Bank of Canada needed to see in order to cause it to raise rates again? Governor, you said you're still prepared to raise rates again um, if inflationary pressures persist, but what does that look like numerically? What do you need to see happen um, in the near term to prompt another hike. The governor is not going to answer that. He's not going to say if employment hits X percent, then the policy rate has to hit Y percent as it would tie his hands. And as expected, he didn't answer it. You know, there's a number of indicators of underlying inflation that we're watching closely in that regard. Um, and we've, we've been pretty clear what those are. I can't have this conversation again. Next, the governor was asked about the housing market, mainly the impact on higher rates for those who were renewing their mortgages. On housing, uh, they're talking the monetary policy report uh, about how generally in cycles where we see higher interest rates, uh, house prices would come down more than what we've seen. Can you explain uh, why that's happened in this situation and what your level of concern is for Canadians who had a much lower interest rate who are now going to have to renew in the coming months or years into a much higher interest rate? You can see he's passing this off to the deputy governor. On the renewals, the deputy governor, for her part, said that this is exactly what the Bank of Canada had in mind when it raised rates. Basically, it's monetary policy at work. As, as more households renew their mortgage at a higher rate, it puts uh, um, you know, downward pressure on spending. They have less, less money available to spend on other things. That dampens demand. That, that sort of gets the economy back in balance. So as Canadians renew their mortgages at much higher rates, they have less money to spend out in the market. There's less money floating around, which should help push inflation back down. Really? And finally, and this is the really interesting part, the governor was asked about Canada's fiscal policy, whether or not government spending was adding to Canada's inflation rate. Governor, to what extent is fiscal policy contributing to the uh, stickiness of inflation that you're observing? And um, are there things that uh, governments could do to, um, to supplement your efforts? And I immediately thought the governor is not going to answer this question, as he's been asked this time and again at press conference after press conference, and he usually flubs it off, saying that either fiscal policy isn't the job of the Bank of Canada, or that they incorporate fiscal policy into their projections. I've already addressed how fiscal policy fits into yeah. the decisions we take. We take it as given, and and uh, and uh, then you know we do what we need to do. We I thought there's no way he's going to answer this question, and then he did. Uh, when we add up the spending plans in the in the budgets of all levels of government, provincial, federal. Um, for next year, we expect uh, government spending to grow at about two and a half percent. So what that means is if all those spending plans are realized, government spending will be adding to demand more than supply is going, growing. And in an environment where we're trying to moderate spending and get inflation down, uh, that's not helpful. Shut the f up! Yeah, as I said, the governor usually bypasses the question he has in almost every single other press conference. But this time around, he's acknowledging that government spending, that government deficits, could be contributing to Canada's inflation rate going forward. So, in summary, we have the Bank of Canada holding on rates this morning, predicting that we won't get inflation back to target until 2025. The bank is warning about the potential problems coming from the Middle East, the potential problems which could hamper the bank's projections on inflation. The bank is well aware of what's happening to the housing market and is a little more vocal than they have been about government policy, about fiscal policy and government spending. Ajada. In terms of moving forward, the policy announcement and the monetary policy report, as well as the press conference, showed that the bank is expecting inflation to remain higher for longer, that we're not going to get back to target until at least 2025, and the bank noted that there are numerous upside risks to that inflation projection. As such, although the bank didn't raise rates this time around, it's definitely painting an uncertain picture going forward. It's painting a picture of a bank that is keeping its eye on the data, of a bank that is concerned about some growing inflationary pressures, about growing pressure on wages, on expectations, and on energy. As mentioned before, it's definitely an uncertain time for the central banks, but we'll obviously continue to monitor Bank of Canada policy on this channel. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates, but for now, thanks so much for watching.